this was uh, not quite the week I think we all have had planned. I know when, um, when our head elder gave me a phone call on Wednesday, he'd been on the road for almost two hours from uh, Durham to Gorham Road. And um, folks, you should have listened to the weather report. <laughs> the snowflakes started to fall when they said they were going to fall, right? Mm -hmm. Just in case you've forgotten, I've got a little snowflake up there, so you've got an idea of what it looked like. And, you know, we're tested by weather, right? My mother keeps saying, well, she says, well, weather the weather, whether we like it or not. I'll try saying that fast, okay? And I know that it was a long commute. I know some people were so frustrated that they couldn't get up places that they left their cars. I hope none of you were caught in that type of trouble. Some are still not home. Like you heard Craig in his, he took a detour. And uh, at least he gets to be with the grandkids, amen? But you know, this week was not a week that went by without some type of controversy. If you, if you saw the Olympics on uh, um, Friday, you know that, that Al Roker was upset with the mayor of New York. There were calls that he should only be a one-term mayor. Because while he was telling everyone to stay at home, he made sure that the students went to school. Now, you may, you may uh, think along the way that, you know, the, the mayor was wrong, but he had a reason. He thought it out, and what the deal was is he knew that some of those children, according to his reasoning, would get a warm meal at school that they wouldn't get at home. Take it for what it is, folks. I know that there were some people that questioned even the leaders of our state, our cities, with what happened after they saw the gridlock with all of the cars and people not able to get home. And yet I appreciated what one person from this area said, they said, you know, we were told, but, you know, we didn't fully follow through with what we thought. And so, many of us got stuck with long commutes home. Folks, they said noon time, it snowed starting noon time. And if you think you can outbeat that snow, you all learned along the way. No way. So, the question that I want to ask you, are we doing what we are supposed to do as a church? Are we following the plan that God has set out for us? Because I really think that in this day and age, we should really question whether we are doing the things that God has called us to do. I'd like you to take your Bibles and I'd like you to turn to uh, Matthew. We're going to stay in Matthew, but I could go to Mark and Luke on this also. Matthew, the 18th chapter. And we want to pick up in, in uh, verse 2 because Jesus is answering a question. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And it says, And he called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like a little child, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. I want you to notice what, when he talked about who was the greatest, he said, unless you become like a little child and be converted is what the King James says. Right? Think about what little children are like. Now, one of the things is, as we get older, we like to think that we still have a childlike mind, right? Not that we're losing it, but we're childlike, right? 
Think about what children are like. Have you ever noticed that the first time that they see something, their eyes get real big in wonderment about what is going on? Just take them to the first time and go to the Magic Kingdom, and the first time that they see the mouse, what happens? Those eyes become big and round. And if I see the mouse, I'm going, eh, yeah, it's Mickey Mouse, and yeah, it's here, okay. But to a child, it's a wonderment to see. Have we lost the wonderment? How many of you went out and stood out in the snow and enjoyed the snow falling on your head? See, there's a few of you that still have that wonderment. It's good to have that type of thing. What are we told to do? Slow down and smell the roses. And yet, how many of us go past things and we forget along the way? Have you ever stood out and watched the sun as it set? I've watched it on the Pacific Ocean where you can watch it just at that glimmer of moment see everything turn green before it goes completely down below the waters. Have you ever watched the sunrise? Have you ever gone out and looked at the stars and see what is going on? Have we forgotten the wonderment about what God has done? We need to become like little children again and look at things with new eyes. Amen? It says here that we need to be converted. We live in a day and age where we are told that we are just to accept people in their sins and that they cannot be changed from the way that they are. But I'm going to tell you that Jesus said that they should be converted. That there should be a change that goes on. Amen? Amen? Now what does it mean to be converted? I converted the counters in my kitchen that I no longer own. You want to know what I converted them into? We put granite down. Folks, a conversion means that you strip out that which is old and you turn it into what? Something that is better. Right? How many times have we thought along the way that our lives cannot be changed, but I'm going to tell you, you need to be like a child to be learnable to the point that you can change the way that you are. Adults, I believe that Jesus can change your life around. Amen. If you want to become the greatest, you've got to learn how to be converted, how to be changed. I don't think that God wants us to continue in our sins. I do not believe that he died on the cross just so that we could be saved the, absolutely the way we are. I go around and I, I, I have a, my fleece jacket. I like to wear it. It says grumpy about it. I got more comments on that grumpy than... Most people don't see me grumpy. My wife has seen me grumpy before. Isn't that right there? I can't be grumpy. I wear that so just in case I am grumpy, I got permission. It says I'm grumpy across my chest. Right? But I believe that the Lord wants me to be converted. We ought to be the happiest people that there are. Think about what the Lord has done for us. We have forgotten sometimes, and we need to be like children to the point that we understand. Now, folks, you can't change yourselves. In your own power, what's the best that you can do? That's the best thing you can do because by surrendering, you allow God's power to come in and change, and in His power, we do not have to stay the same that we are. In fact, I'm going to tell you folks, when Jesus comes again, I'm no longer going to be a sinner. 
right now. I claim that I'm the same in the promise that Jesus is going to complete the change when he comes again. Amen? Amen. Verse 4. Therefore, whosoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Folks, we, we need to learn how, how to be humble. We need to learn how to be teachable. The greatest problem that I see is that so many of us think that we have made it and we are at the point where we should be. And we need to learn that we need to humble ourselves and learn that we are not there yet. My mother would always say to me, you could not go to bed until you learned something new. My mother strove to learn something new before noontime. I'm getting to the point where I enjoy naps again. Amen? They're not so bad as I thought they were. So you better learn something new. You better be uh, let me tell you something. I, I do have my doctorate, and I, and I can tell you that I went through all of these extra classes along the way. And I finally got up to the dissertation, and I wanted to quit. And she wouldn't let me. <laughs> no, I've told you all, and I'll say this again, pastors got dyslexia. Do not use the problems that you have to say that you can't do something. I believe the Lord will give you the power to overcome because I'm going to tell you, the pastor was able to finish his dissertation. It took the Mrs. Peterson to give me that all way. But the Lord helped me to get my dissertation done so that I could receive my doctorate. And I'm going to tell you something that I know. I know an awful lot about teensy, teensy bit of information, which means that there is always something more to learn. Amen? Let us never think that we have totally made it. Never let us think that we know everything. Let us never think we need to be of the type of mind that we are constantly seeking out to find that which we can learn about God. If you go to Romans, you will find, no, it's Hebrews. If you go to Hebrews, you will find that it says that Jesus learned while he was on this earth. Did you know that? Jesus learned. He learned to be obedient unto death. Who are we to be any different than our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ? That we need to learn. I believe that we will continue to learn even when we get to heaven. Amen? Imagine the marvelous things we're going to find out there. I, I was talking to Kelly this morning. You know, I wonder how we're going to be able to move around. Do you think that we'll think something and we can be at the next place? I don't know. Like Kelly was saying, the Bible says the Lord spoke and it what? It happened. I believe that there's so much that we can learn, so much that we can do with things. And if we are going to be the greatest, we need to become like a child to the point where we are humble enough that we can learn something new each and every day. Amen? Amen. Verse 5 and 6. And whoever welcomes a little child like this, if my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. We have been given a great gift with every child that is in this church. Amen? Amen. Every child that is in this church is someone special that God has given us. Someone that we can teach. Someone that we can bring to Jesus Christ. And we are to take that 
life, and we are hard to help bring that person so that they can know Jesus Christ so well that they will continue to follow Jesus Christ the rest of their lives. I want to tell you something right now. I know the statistics. The fact is that we are living in a day and age where fewer and fewer people are wanting to be Christians. I know that it is hard, but I believe that it is still our job to reach out and touch people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that still the day of calling people to make decisions is still here. We are still to do the work. I believe that it will be harder and harder to run our school. But I'm going to tell you something else that I know that I believe. You cannot get Seventh-day Adventist Christian education in the public schools. The public schools are training the children in order to follow the religion of government. There is no God. There is no creation. There is nothing that is there but believing that the government is going to take care of you from the beginning of life until the end, and the government replaces God. Am I not saying what is true? Now, I believe that government is needed. Do not believe that I am saying we should get rid of government. That is not what pastor is trying to say. What I'm trying to say is our ultimate reliance upon everything that we have in our lives must be upon God. And I'm going to tell you that the reason why we spend tens of thousands of dollars on young people is that we believe that we will do whatever we can to train them to follow Jesus Christ for the rest of their lives. Amen? Amen. We have Sabbath school here. Do you know the reason why we have Sabbath schools? Why we have the children's departments? In cradle roll, they were learning, and I believe kindergarten had the same thing. They were talking about Noah and the ark. Do you think they're going to learn about Noah and the ark in public school? They were learning about, uh, you heard that they were learning about uh, Saul who became Paul in uh, the youth class. Folks, <laughs> do you realize that we spend thousands of dollars for materials and supplies and everything for our Sabbath schools? But I believe it is worth the cost. We spend tens of thousands of dollars on the school each and every year. But I believe it is worth the cost. Jesus was willing to die for how many? One. So if we spend all of that money and we get one converted to the Lord, it's worth all the price. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm going for. It. I want every single child every single young person to be a follower of Jesus Christ in this church. And if it's up to me, I'm not going to see one lost. Not one. That's what I'm praying for. I want every single child in this church one for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we don't do that and we give them over to sin, it would be better for us to put a millstone on our necks and toss ourselves into the sea. I believe this, folks. My wife and I were, were, were past the paying for children to go to school. I, I know what it was like. But we would willingly make that commitment again. And so the thing is, is that as we find the ability to do that, we help other young people. Adventist We're going to keep this on until the day that we die because we believe that we want to win every child for Jesus Christ. And if we are not making this type of commitment, we are going to fail. I 
I'm not going to give up on our children, folks. Turn over a page. I don't want to uh, give one more scene with Jesus and children. And this is in the 19th chapter of Matthew. Verse 13 to 15. And then the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. And Jesus said, Let the little children come unto me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. It is not unusual that parents would want their children to be dedicated, to be prayed over, to have hands placed upon their heads, to pray that the Lord would uh, take care of them. I believe in blessing children. Whenever we have a children's dedication, in my prayer, I always pray, first of all, that the Lord will come upon that child, and that the Lord's Spirit will be upon that child. Then you know who I pray for next? The parents. There are time parents, you're going to think you're never going to make it through. You will survive. Even teenagers, you will survive. You don't think you will. You will. And I've always prayed that in the process that the Lord would take care of my children. I will tell you, if you will always pray that prayer. The Lord will come through somehow. And then after I pray for the parents, I pray for the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the brothers, the sisters. I pray for everyone that is in that extended family because each one there has something to do with the upkeep of that child, bringing them to Jesus Christ. But I always finish with the church. Folks, Every child that we can come across, we make a difference in their lives. But sometimes we forget and we get too busy on things. And Jesus, as he was doing his ministry, was becoming so busy that what happened is that sometimes those around him thought that it was best to keep his time in those proper type of things that he should do. And so they pushed away the children from being blessed by Jesus. Sometimes we can do that. In one of the places that I pastored, there was the Cornerstone Church. And the pastor of that church, I believe, is still John Haney. And he, he got so big and had so many people around him that he started to exclude himself from the people. And how I know this is that one Sabbath we had one of his members who showed up at our church had seen a kill in San Antonio. And this man came up to me and he, and he said, Pastor, you're eating on the same plates as everyone else? I said, yes, well, why wouldn't I? He says, this is unusual, and you're eating with everyone else. Well, yes, why would it not? Well, he said, in Pastor Hagee's church, he has crystal glass for his drink. He has china for his plates. He has silver for his silverware. And you're eating off of plastic and paper and, and foam cups. And I said, yes, why not? Everyone else is doing it. I'm going to be like everyone else. He says, I don't understand this. I said, look, when I saw Jesus and read about him, Jesus was willing to be out amongst people and did not have these type of errors where he separated himself. Now, folks, if you feel like you need to say something to me, please stop and talk to me. I'm open to hearing you. Young people, there isn't a thing.
thing that you have done that your pastor is not ready to listen to you and encourage you to come to Jesus Christ. I don't care what the thing you do wrong. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask that the Lord will forgive your sins and ask you to come to Jesus Christ. I'm not going to give up on you. There's nothing that is so bad that we can't ask for Jesus Christ's help. Amen. 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 I want you to know that. When I was in Zambia with the chairman group, I remember the couple that came up to me. Their daughter had had a temperature for over a week. The doctors couldn't do anything in order to get her temperature down. And they brought the child to me to pray over. It's a very humbling thing. You know you don't have the power. And I took that child and I prayed for that child and prayed that the Lord would take care of her temperature and put her into God's hands. Now folks, the next day I was in the town of Muncie where we were at. And the father crossed the busy street and said, Pastor, the temperature went down last night and our daughter is fine. Folks, we should always be open with one another and never have the type of errors that we think that we should keep certain people away from us. We should be open to allow anything to happen. Folks, I think it's so important that, that I'm willing to go down to Crater Roll and sit on the ground with the kids to, to listen to what goes on. I've been in kindergarten and I put puzzles together. Heard the answers in the early teens, the juniors. There isn't a place that we should think that we are better from that we should try and keep away from. Folks, the work of this church is in every single room in this church. There is not an age group that we want to keep from Jesus Christ. And until the Lord comes, I believe we need to do this work. I know that it is not easy to keep a Sabbath school going. It's always one of the toughest areas to find people to help out in the Sabbath school department. It's always a problem at school. We've got one problem, we've got another problem. You know, folks, I don't have the answers. I'm not the smartest person in the world. You'll start it from me first. But I know this, that the Lord has called us to do something and to be involved in something. And I know that the Lord will always give us what we need to continue to do his work. We just need to step forward and do it. So I'm going to tell you that I'm a supporter of Sabbath School. I'm a supporter of our church school. And I believe that every single dollar that we spend down there is worth what we are doing. By the way, I'm hoping I can get this instituted again. I would like to see our Sabbath school classes from downstairs come up here and do something on 13th Sabbath or somewhere along there. I think you need to hear the kids repeat their memory verses. I think you need to hear the songs. I kind of like them myself. I still know Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. This is what the clock says. Tick tock, tick tock. See, I didn't know this. <laughs> Folks, is there a child in this church we can afford to lose to the devil? Young people, I want you to know that your church, your pastor, is going to do everything we can to help you to grow closer to Jesus Christ. And I hope that you will challenge the adults to be converted to be like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yes. Folks, oh, 
books up. Again, I know what the predictions are. The predictions are that somewhere along the way, we're going to have to close our school. There are not enough children being born. There seems to be no hope on things. But I am not deterred. I know that this may be a difficult area in order to win people for Jesus Christ. I am not going to stop. We are going to do evangelism. We're going to have our schools. We're going to have our Sabbath schools. And we're going to ask people to make decisions for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not going to stop these things. I don't care about the predictions. I believe in conversion. I believe that God wants us to change. He doesn't want us to stay the same sinners that we've been. I believe that he wants us to be called saints. Not because we are worthy, but because he is worthy. Because when we accept him, we become the holy ones of God. We're no better than anyone else. He expects us to be humble, to be teachable, to put ourselves to the point where we are willing to accept that we do not know it all, that we do not have it, but that we are willing to trust on our God to take care of all of our needs. Amen. How many of our needs? All. all. We need to come to the point that we are willing to receive everyone who comes into this church, especially our children, and do everything we can in order to win them to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It takes commitment. It takes, it takes finances. It takes work. It takes everything we have. But folks, I want every single child in this church to be there when Jesus comes. So folks, I'm going to tell you, I support the school. I support the Sabbath schools. The pastor comes on Fridays. Would have loved to come this Friday. We're stir crazy by Friday. Soon I'm going to be starting a pastor's Bible class with the students down at the school. And you know, folks, I believe that in every way possible, we're going to bring these children to be followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I'm going to tell you that I'm willing to make these commitments, but I'm asking the church, what about you? Are you willing to be committed to doing those things that the world says we're crazy to do? Are you willing? Let's bow our heads for word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, you've told us along the way that the, we need to become like the little ones. That we need to open our eyes and wonder for the things that you've done. I pray that you will humble us, dear Father. Dear Father, asked us to be committed. I know the expenses. I know the hardship. But I ask us, dear Father, that you will bless us. And if you want to be committed to, to helping with the Sabbath schools, helping with the schools, bringing our children to Jesus Christ, just say amen right now. Amen. You've heard the amen, dear Father. I know that there may be some who are on the head. 